And it does look like we're getting into some more rural areas here in Texas. So as I mentioned before, what we've heard from people who uh, do cover these pursuits frequently is they say these drivers, sometimes the suspects go back to areas they're familiar with. That way they know which way they're going to be turning. They know which direction they're headed. Uh, and we're seeing this driver making those quick decisions as they roll through intersections. Uh, these windows tinted, so it's hard when our chopper zooms in on it, uh, unable to see exactly how many people may be in this vehicle, but you can see it is this silver pickup that police continue to follow closely behind. There's a big, large uh, silver toolbox in the back of the pickup truck, and uh, this now uh, is giving us a look at the, the driver, but when our camera zooms out, you can see just how many squad cars are following behind. Uh, we've gotten a count of uh, of at least three there's probably more than that and they're all talking and communicating with each other too you know they say here's where they're turning they always give road by road instructions and they also probably have police uh, responding around the area as well to try to help keep uh, people and the traffic safe you can see there another oh it looked like they tried to use that spike strip and that uh, that's why the driver had went into those left hand lanes you saw that police vehicle had been stopped off to the side of the road. So there you go. That was one of the things I'd mentioned was some of these tactics that they try to use. They got to think about how many other vehicles are in the area. They got to think about also uh, exactly what kind of maneuvers they're going to be able to do. It does seem like this vehicle is slowing down now. It could be because they're coming up on more traffic. It could be because that spike strip may have been a little bit successful. You did see, though, that driver had tried to evade the spike strip by going over into the left. And uh, now you can tell with uh, just how many more lanes are being added to this road, it's going to be a little bit of a busier area. So we are watching again live here on News Now from Fox. Uh, viewer discretion is advised as we don't know how this may end or when it may end. Uh, but I do want to make that note because we have seen some of these and uh, in some tragic ways, unfortunately. So hopefully this is a situation where the driver realizes I'm not going to get away. These police are right behind me. I better just surrender, keep everyone safe here this afternoon. But of course, that's not always the case. So we're going to continue to watch this here on News Now from Fox. Thank you to all of our viewers who are here watching live with us. And you can tell this vehicle slowing down. So wondering if those spike strips uh, may have worked on some of his tires. Uh, it's hard to see because we're only seeing one side of the car. But you can tell uh, police have been in communication, as I talked about before, because they were at that intersection stopping traffic since they knew this driver is obviously not going to be stopping. You hate to see a situation uh, where they uh, T-bone another car or they themselves also get T-boned by another car. We saw that happen uh, just earlier this week or last week. You know, there was a pursuit in California when uh, some cars got a green light and they didn't know a pursuit was happening and a car ran their red light and that's when uh, they had gotten T-boned and crashed into the uh, uh, a little bush area in front of a gas station. So uh, once again, here we are watching this uh, pursuit live. They attempted to use spike strips at least once. We're going to have to see uh, now that uh, they've tried it once if they're going to use any other tactics to try to get this driver to get pulled over.
And for our viewers who are just joining us here, you are watching this live pursuit of this uh, silver pickup truck here in Texas. And again, just information we do know at this time uh, from our Dallas station, uh, they were being told that the DEA had originally asked Dallas police to tail this vehicle. Now, we don't know the reasons why they'd asked them to tail this vehicle. Um, and so Dallas police did try to initiate a traffic stop. When the driver didn't stop, they took off. That's when they obviously uh, uh, then uh, started this pursuit here on Thursday afternoon. Uh, you can definitely tell that this uh, vehicle looks like it is struggling to keep up with this pace here as uh, we continue to watch it live. And uh, it does look like possibly somewhere on those uh, left-hand uh, side tires, uh, he may be having some trouble. I do believe we saw uh, the wheel come off of this pickup truck. So eventually this truck isn't going to be able to go very much further. You can see too, the speeds have definitely decreased as uh, we've been watching this here uh, for uh, over 20 minutes now. And so uh, this pickup looking like it's coming to a rolling uh, slow here as it tries to continue to get away from police. But uh, his vehicle is going to be giving up uh, very shortly. You're can't drive on those rims for very long and again uh, that was from the su success of those uh, spike strips that they had tried and now since we're uh, and you can see right there we're getting a better look at this vehicle uh, you can see his tire completely gone from that driver's side uh, very flat in there on the uh, a back end of the driver's side and uh, this suspect does look like uh, they have their hands coming out of the window. This is going to be the time when police are then going to have to stop, make sure that they are protected. They're going to then give directions to the suspect on how to surrender themselves to keep uh, not only themselves but also of course the law enforcement uh, agents and uh, officers as safe as possible. Our chopper giving us this live look again, uh, this pursuit coming from Garland, Texas. Uh, trees obviously could not be something we can control as they're in the way, but this truck has not come to a complete stop yet as we uh, watch this driver uh, near the end of this pursuit here in Texas. And you can see those squad cars right up on the back end of this truck. There's a better look at those two wheels. So we saw the spike strips earlier. It, you saw this driver trying to uh, maneuver his way around those spike strips. Obviously, it was not successful for him, but successful for police. So that is uh, good news for them as they are able to help end this pursuit. Uh, now they're going to try to take cover and give directions to this suspect on how to safely uh, come out of the car where they can come continue to see their hands and uh, they're going to have him face his back towards them and uh, then also get down on the ground. It does look like he has cigarette and possibly a cell phone in his hand. Looks like he's trying to argue with police on what he's supposed to do here. So uh, police trying to give him the correct directions and so that he can safely put down everything he has in his hands, get down on the ground so they can apprehend him. And just a reminder, viewer discretion is advised as they do a huge takedown there uh, with the sheriff. And again, that's a, a pretty risky move by uh, agents there as they uh, take him down onto the ground. Looks like, he, though, he was not being cooperative. Obviously, that's the time when they were saying, please put your cell phone down slowly on the ground. He obviously was arguing and saying something to the police. So uh, it looked like the sheriff decided to take uh, the opportunity when he was distracted talking with police uh, to tackle this man down to the ground. And they have... Uh, then put the cuffs on his wrists there behind his back. They're going to be searching him for any weapons and taking this person into custody here as they end this pursuit on this Thursday afternoon.